Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. We're glad to hear this morning. Appreciate your viewership. Got a big show lined up, and I uh, appreciate the feedback we get from y'all. And it's just really, really neat uh, here, you know, getting to read these notes and everything. And uh, appreciate you enjoying the show. Now, our weather today is high of 91, low of 70, 78, and the water temperature is staying at 84. With just a lot of humidity out there. Our river readings brought to us by Mountain Dew. Get out and do. We're looking at the Appalachia to Blunstown, is the same as it was yesterday, 7.8. And it looks the same way tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. But at Choctaw at Caraville, it's reading a 5.9. It really sort of shot up yesterday and it drop, it's going to just start dropping a little bit today. So it's going to be, uh, going to be in good shape. The Appalachia uh, River, though, is just that real steady flow like that. And you can really, they just got it situated. They got all kind of gauges up there. If they want to keep, if they don't get a big uh, volume of water behind the dam, they can just keep the, the level just like that with all the, the turbines and all they have. It's really, really cool setup. And I, years ago, I was going to go in there and just do a walkthrough and all, but they won't allow us to do that anymore because of uh, uh, federal safety reasons and all. So, anyway, uh, it, it's a quite an operation. And now, take a look at our, our uh, tie chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Good strong tides finally. They're coming in today. We have a high tide right now by 618 to be the high tide. It's going to start going out. So really at the end of the show, you can go ahead and start uh, put your boat in. At low tide, it's going to be going out all day to about 515 tonight. And the wind's going to be right now south, southeast. It's only about 7, not as bad as it has been. And then it's going to switch back around like it did yesterday. Switch back around coming out of north tonight at about 5 to 6. So really the wind situation has sort of settled down as it, compared to what it was the last uh, last week and week before. All right, let's go ahead and take our first break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at some pictures. I don't have that many today, and uh, but it's still some good quality ones. And this first one, this is cool. This is our local folks here. This is from right to left. Let's go from right to left. That's Adam Ellisor. And that's the late Bill Ellisor's nephew, so I've known him for a long time. His lovely wife, Kim Perdue Ellisor, and their son, Shepard. Now, I want you to take a look at that picture. This is, a, this is what a, I call a family framer because, first of all, you got to look at the size of those fish. <laughs> those are some quality red snapper. And, uh, and then the colors and everything, and that's just a, a great, that was a great trip. I'm going to... Try to get a uh, Adam been on. Uh, I've had Adam do things before. He's he's probably around a junior senior going into Moses this year, and Kim is quite an outdoor girl, and Adam loves the outdoors also. So that's a great family picture. Let's go from a, a really pretty picture to a pretty ugly picture. <laughs> Check this out. They're not ugly. They're so ugly they're cute. And I was talking about a gopher stew and uh, cooking gophers and all. And they used now. I want to tell you something. They used to eat a lot of possum. Possum was a delicacy, and people still eat possum. A few people even have a possum festival and things like that. Uh, but possum stew, you know, I talked about the people on the uh, on the coast doing things. But folks inland in the early years, they lived off this possum stew. Now it was a big deal to them. So uh, be aware of possum. And I just thought this was funny. And I, I don't know these kids. This is just something I picked up. Every family has that one kid. And <laughs> look at the kid on. Now isn't that the truth? You stop and think about. Uh, the different families and all, and there's always some little kids got got a squirrel. I because they got everybody got a squirrel in the family, so I thought that was cute. Now this is cool. This is actually uh, Billy Archer posted this, and I then I don't let me talk about it first. These these fish finding machines, the the progression of them, and the and what they can do now has just been uh, phenomenal. And what they can do now, you can just, Billy can just look at it and say, oh, you've got Snapper over here, a group over here, you've got uh, Jacks over here, AJ, so whatever you want to catch, I mean, that's what he'll put you on. But that's how, that's how if you get, I, I cannot read them that well. I mean, I can see the color and everything on them, but I, and I know more color, more fish. But you can really, and, and his bass fisherman with his side sonar, look inside, and a red fisherman, you see what's to the side, and it has just been uh, revolutionary. Especially the last five to six years has been revolutionary as far as these machines, I call them. But this picture here, one on the left, that's a column, okay? 
he's actually in 184 feet of water. Okay, so you got two pictures. That that is solid fish for 184 feet. Okay, solid. That's why you call a column of solid fish. So that in itself, uh, that picture out there just tells you. Now you got to keep in mind, all these captains have their special spots. And they work hard to get these spots set up right there, and they rotate. They don't go out there and fish them every day. Obviously, this one hasn't been fished in a while. That's why I tell people, if you really want to catch some fish and really enjoy it, you know, go on some, some of these guys' boat, and that's where I'm coming from right there because they're going to find the fish for you. And and uh, what, what has happened over the years, though, I, I get tickled at Billy. He'll, he'll actually have binoculars, okay, and he'll be looking on the horizon if somebody's getting close to him, and he'll say, all right, pick it up. If somebody headed toward him, he he can tell if they headed toward him, because they don't want him, he don't want him to get his numbers, and rightfully so. And, and you know some people uh, are called armchair captains. They'll they'll sit around there, they turn on their electronics and try to zap people's spots and all. That's just uh, that just ain't right. And but uh, most most of the people I know don't do that, but I know some of them do it. So uh, anyway, let's move on. To, uh, I do have a uh, this right here, E.O. Wilson Biophilia Center. A summer photo contest is going on right now. We're halfway through July, but he's got the next two weeks left. And you go to their website, E.O. Wilson Biophilia Center. It's just a photo contest, and you gotta got to have it in by July 31st. And the winners, they're going to pick winners. And we're going to show the winners on the show. And, but that's going to be outdoor photography in mid-summer, okay? Got a good, oh, I got this right here, Permit versus Pompano. Someone was asking the other day, and they are hard to tell the difference between these. A permit and a pompano, okay, here and this post, I found a little post here and it does it better than anything because here it is, a permit is on, on top and a pompano on the bottom. And there are five things. Number one, look at the fins, okay, on a permit they're sort of pointed, okay, and, and the, the tail of a, of a pompano is sort of wider, just, just concentrate right there on the tail. And that's a giveaway, but a lot of times you catch a fish, you really, that, won't, that won't really do much. Uh, so you see how it's forked and all? Okay, the pectoral, let's go, okay, the pectoral fin is just a wider fin. But again, that's not a big determining factor. It's, it's a couple, all these little things here. Now the head, now this, I, I go by the last two, number four and five, the head, the head of the permit is just sort of a flatter head, okay? The pompano is more pointed. And that, that you can really tell the difference there and then the coloring. And that's probably the one thing I'll look at when I when I first get them out of water, if I not really know what it is, and I catch a lot more pompano than permits. But I, if it's got yellow on it, I know that's a pompano. If it's got more white on it, it's going to be a permit. But uh, a lot of times, but they do look alike. They remember the same family, the Jack family, and they're both good to eat. The pompano just tastes a little bit better, but they both fight very strong because of their wide body and the way they're set up like that. So anyway, that's that's the uh, that's the permit versus pompano. Okay? Alright, let's go ahead and we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Alright, welcome back. Let's read one of the emails I got, or one of the texts I got from Debbie Strickland Gay. You know, Debbie, Debbie's family had that area up there and he can find them. And we've had them on the Gay family, have Cliff Gay and then his family and all. They run the Econ Fina uh, canoe, the canoe livery and kayak launch up there. It's old family land. They've had it a very long time and ran into them the other day. But she sent me, uh, I'm going to read this to you. Send me this little n notice. Uh, hey there, Coach. Enjoyed your story of Tate's Hell last week. We went driving a month or so ago over to Rice Lake and Hickory Landing. It had been years since we had been there, but we used to camp and fish over there a good bit. Have you ever heard the ballad of Tate's Hell by Will McLean? And uh, I'm going to get to that a little later. I've seen the words and all. I just want to say hello and tell you how much we enjoyed hearing the legend from you. I love hearing local stories of our area, and we talk about the local stories of our area and how, how important they are, so uh, that, that's good right there. And, and I, that's why I bring you local stories. We have so many interesting legends from the old days, and you're right, Debbie, that we do. And we've captured some of them, and we need to capture the rest of them. Thanks, and I'll give us a call and paddle the creek. We'd love to see you. Thank you, Debbie. And, and we're going to get up that way. I asked her, they're actually, they're still, they're renting the, the canoes and kayaks up there, but they're actually just doing it like Monday through Friday. She said the weekend is just crazy on Econ Fina, and that sort of reflects what I've been telling you what's going on uh, all over the place now as far as boats and canoes and kayaks. So they actually sort of close on the weekends, but they're open Monday through Friday. But summertime is a great time to go up there 
and uh, what great folks and all, and what a what a fun trip. If you haven't been on the Econ Finder, that, that's right here in our backyard. If you haven't been on Econ Finder, you need to do it. And uh, it's easy. Just go up there, and they'll take they'll pick you up and bring you back, and it's just a great setup there. So, and uh, that's good. And we're going to talk about that battle later on. See if I can find it. All right, now we're talking about we're talking about all this rash and everybody we had on our from getting uh, that poison oak. Now I got to thinking about. It, that's just being in Florida, and also the bug bites. I, I want to make. I got a list of bug bites I want to share with you. I'm gonna show you just pictures of them. Uh, These are 11 different bugs that we're aggravated with. Okay, you don't know. See, I, I didn't know this was poison oak. I thought I had poison ivy, but I kept looking, and uh, it ended up being poison oak. So let's look at some of these insect bites. This is a tick bite. Okay, and uh, you get a tick bite. You're gonna use. You're gonna see the tick first, and you want to make sure uh, you want to get it out of there. Get the head out. And they can they can be in there three to six days, and they're just gonna suck your blood out, but and they're gonna get fat off your blood if you don't get it out. You see them on dogs a lot in the summertime. Uh, this is a spider bite, and on the left it looks like a snake bite to me. But this is a picture we have uh, from a health magazine on bites, and this is a, a spider bite, and they're just puncture, and a lot of times you don't see them, they'll crawl away. Okay, number three, we're looking at mosquito bite. Uh, who has not had that? And uh, that's. That's an aggravating bite, the mosquito bite. It just sort of puffs up on you, okay? Uh, how about a bed bug, bed bug bite? Uh, don't let bed bugs get to you, but uh, they sort of scattered out like that. They're similar to other bites, but uh, if you got bed bugs, you need to get, get rid of them. Uh, they're small, sort of puffy. Uh, what about if you got head lice? Ooh, that's ugly, isn't it? But, uh, you know, kids get them sometimes. They don't mean to get them, and they just... Uh, and they're very contagious, and their bites are small and and uh, sort of ugly looking. All right, how about a flea bite? Okay, you get flea bites, and we don't, you know, uh, I used to get a lot of flea bites. I don't, we don't get many flea bites much anymore, but you can tell, you used to tell, uh, but so many people are so good about taking care of the pets and all. The flea, the flea problem is not bad. Once the flea problem comes, though, it really, they get infested really fast. All right, number seven. How about a just a, just like a yellow fly or dog fly, and uh, that's an ugly bite too. All right, that's about got number eight. Sand fly. These these are okay. What we call no seams, and they just got all over you. And this is this one that's aggravating, uh, you know, this time of year and all, especially late in the afternoon, early in the morning. And the best thing just wear long sleeves. I, you know, figure that out. And then the uh, red bugs right here. You get red bugs, and you just get them all over. Well, they're 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 aggravating. Everyone's pretty easy, to, you know, you pretty well know when you get stung by an ant, but it'll sort of puff up and get some pus in it, and especially, usually a fire ant to do that, but that's an ant bite right there. A lot of times you want to, you've got children and all, and you'll, you won't you see, if it's yourself, you're going to see it, but a lot of times the children are going to come up there and show you show you what they have. And then, then the bee sting, or usually you can see the bee sting or, or wasp sting like that. So uh, that's it, that's the uh, bug bites. I want to uh, tell a story, and I'm not, I'm not going to have time. To, I'm going to go ahead and tell the story. for. Uh, so I'm going to break early and then come back and tell you another local uh, story that I think you're going to enjoy. So we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at our fishing game time today, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers down in Port St. Joe. We're looking at 916 to 1116 this morning and tonight 940 to 1140. I want to talk a minute about bucket list. We all have our outdoor bucket list and a lot of things we want to do and I still have mine. I want to go fish Costa Rica. I wanted to go to Boca Grande and catch a tarpon. Well, that one's checked off. I did that five or six years ago. But I, and then one of the things I've always wanted, I've wanted to fly fish up in Missoula, Montana, where, the, where they did the movie A River Runs Through It. I just want to go there and, and fish that river where, where, uh, where the McLean family fished. I just, that's on my bucket list. I want to do it. And another, another thing, my bucket list is not real long, so I keep adding stuff to it. But another thing I've always wanted to do was go up to Alaska and catch those halibut, or those big flounder, we call them. And so uh, these are things that I know y'all, each one of y'all out there have, sort of have a bucket list you want to do. Some of y'all are hunting the big elk and all kinds of things with a bow and all, all kinds of bucket list things. So I shared mine with you. Well, uh, one of my former students, Mark McLeod, he was in Moser class of 81. Mark grew up here in Lynn Haven and played football for the Raiders and all. And, and he ended up uh, going on to got a good degree in, in journalism and all. And he ended up 
uh, working for ESPN, he lived in Gainesville and did a lot of Gator stuff for ESPN. He's always got a great voice and he always is sort of has just been, been just his passion for college athletics and all. Now he lives in St. Augustine and does a podcast called The Blitz with Mark McLeod and uh, it's really cool stuff. He's on a lot of talk radio, he's excellent at it. He's, one of, he's up in the top echelon of some of these talk radios and all. So uh, anyway, if you want to check it out, it's called The Blitz with Mark McLeod. But some of his high school buddies, I got them, uh, the Johnson boys, Bear and, and Brian, Bear and Brian Johnson, they were in 81 and 82 also. One of them was state weightlifting champ. Their dad loved going to Alaska. And when their dad passed away, the boys took a trip sort of in memory of their dad. And, and Mark went along with it. And the, the uh, I got pictures. I call it, We're going to try to get the pictures. I'm on, I'm on, he gave a little diary of what's going on on, on each uh each day of the trip and also on the pictures I'm just going to sort of go through the pictures right here I mean look at this uh, is that just the scenery and I'm, I'm just going to go through the pictures I'm going to start reading the diaries to go through the pictures and all but uh, and they'll, the pictures will be self-explanatory as we go through it and we'll just show the pictures that I'm reading the diary so uh, and the picture of course Mark McLeod doing some of the interviews and all and, and then I'll have the picture too of the whole crew but anyway uh, day one uh, and, okay, Seward. They went. They went the first day. They went uh, salmon fishing for, for uh, up there in Seward, and they just uh, absolutely stunning. And had pictures of doll sheep, and they they ran the glacier and everything. And they caught twenty, and uh, sea bass and halibut. They were jumping all around the boat. That was day one. Then going on day two. Actually, they didn't fish on day two. They did a lot of a lot of touring, and they drove over to Homer. Uh, and then they went out on a glacier, a, a 50 mile trek. They didn't walk it, of course. They just uh, went, saw sea otters and, and all kinds of different things. And they went out on the boat. The captain said the tide was low and, and the glacier, uh, it was just very exciting. And they, the captain, they got really close to the glacier, you saw in that picture there. And the temperature, water temperature was 47 degrees. We always talk about the water temperature here. It was 47 degrees up there. Uh, day three, uh, this is when they went halibut fishing, okay? They sent 180 pounds of halibut to the fish house to bag and flash freeze for the flight to Florida. Now that's how you do it right there, okay? And they kept 10 pounds for ourselves to grill, to grill that night. And uh, they get up tomorrow. This is day three. It's a four-day trip, so they're getting up early the next day and uh, they try to uh, try to go fishing there. And okay, so they went to the Salty Dog Saloon and they hung up a. They hang up all kind of uh, money up there in that place, and they put it, put it. Uh, they ran into some of Larry's uncle's friends up there, so I had all kind of. And then day four, the final day, is a rough one, and that's that's to be expected sometimes. And uh, it was a long ride to the sweet spot, but they brought in, they brought in 140 pounds of halibut yesterday, and they had to throw a 35 pound halibut back because the halibut back because they caught the limit. Can you imagine having to throw a 35 pound halibut back in the water? So, but today, Mark caught a 50-pound halibut. It's just an outstanding trip, and Bear and Brian's tribute to their dad was an enormous success. He would certainly be smiling down on us. And uh, that was a four-day trip up there to, to Alaska. So I, what, what was cool about that, uh, I, Mark had told me he was going. I told him sort of to send me a post of what was going on because uh, vicariously I wanted to, to see what was going, you know, live through them. And, and uh, I was some Mosley boys, and I did it out of a, just an honorable thing for their dad. And I... And uh, I, I do, I, you know, we keep putting off these, we keep talking about these trips and all we want to take, and a lot of times we keep putting them off, and, and I wanted to, uh, I'm going to start looking into that Halibut Trail. I know some of y'all have gone up there, and uh, to me, a four-day trip is ideal. You get to do a little bit of sightseeing, uh, you get to do a couple, a couple of days of serious fishing, and, and uh, so I'm going to look into that trip, Mark, and thank you for sharing that with us over there from St. Augustine and, and the Johnson boys. Good to see all pictures of all y'all, and uh and I encourage y'all to do it. Okay, I, I've only got a couple of minutes left, and I was going to go get into a story in my book, but I'm just not, uh, to do it justice, I don't have time to tell the whole story. So I want to, I'll do this later on. And, and that's the thing about uh, planning a show like this. Uh, sometimes you have an outline all set up, and you can just start rolling with it, and then sometimes you just run out of time. So I run out of time today. But uh, I want to encourage you, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, on the, on the last day of hunting, and the appreciation you have, you know, going, flashing back to yesterday, uh, talking about my brother, I was, I was thinking if I had known that was my last day hunting with him in our lifetime, it was since we hunted together for 
he was killed at 41. We hunted together since we were about four years old. If I knew that had been the last day, I went over there and I was by my Jeep and he was by his truck. And it was just, a, I can still see it like it was yesterday. If I'd known it was my last day, I was going over there and I would just give him a big old hug and tell him how much I loved him. But uh, uh, I didn't, we didn't know. We didn't have that crystal ball. So I, again, again, I encourage you. And I think that's what's so great about outdoors why I do a show like this. When I teach an outdoor education class and why I encourage everyone to do things in the outdoors because you do get that bond. Like Mark McLeod and those fishing buddies of his, they have that bond and they'll always remember that trip. And that's the thing about the outdoors and family camping trips and, and different things like that. They just, uh, I, I can still remember so many of our camping trips together when our kids were growing up. And I want to encourage y'all and uh, I appreciate the support y'all give us on a show like this. And, uh, I always ask you to support our sponsors. That's how we get, you know, keep the show going. And Jeff Peck works hard. Gail works hard behind the scenes. And I get everybody who sees me doing all this. And uh, the show would be impossible without two of them. And I, I appreciate them and love them for what they do. So anyway, getting back to outdoors, uh, what are you going to do this summer? Well, uh, talking about memorable trips. We've had so many memorable scallop trips. And they're going to be coming around pretty soon. So we're going to uh, hopefully get some more. And... Uh, same thing, same thing with, with your fishing trips on offshore and everything. I had a buddy of mine call the other day. I've been invited on a trip. He got a ticket for me. And, and the only problem is the last three trips he's been on, <laughs> I won't tell you what boat it is. Uh, two times it, uh, it, was, it got out to the whistle boo and the captain had turned around a third time when they got out there on the fishing spot and got lines out. And the lines got tangled in the steering cable and the steering cable broke and it had to limp back in. So that, I asked him if anybody had any bananas on board, and he said, sure enough, somebody did have some bananas on the boat. So don't ever take bananas offshore or on a boat with you, no matter offshore or in the river, and that, that's the bad luck. So he definitely experienced that. That was uh, Tom. Uh, I told Tom the next trip he takes is going to be the charm, though. He'll, he'll catch a lot of fish. Going to wrap it up for today. Thank you all for watching. Uh, we're going to uh, bring another good show tomorrow and be giving away some stuff. Uh, actually, we'll be giving away some seafood tomorrow. So have a great day. Do something good today for your fellow man, and God bless you. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.